chose the outside lane. Oriole Servia trying to pick up his first win for Newman Haas Racing. Green, oh, and a spin. Green, All green, in the start. We've got cars going everywhere. Third, four, and a flush trade. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And it includes Will Power. Danica Patrick spins. And you see Mike Wandretti, he was complaining at the beginning of this because, and there's damage to Danica's car. Royce, the track's probably just a little bit, that mist comes down. It doesn't take much with these slicks, Marty. And this is really going to affect Will Power. Rick, let's check in. What's going on down there? Well, I'm standing by what I will describe a very agitated Michael Andretti. You called this. You said that was going to happen out there. Yep, and I... I this is the worst officiating I've ever seen. Sorry, Brian, but this was bad, really bad. Well, we lost the car and we lost the lead. I mean, this is just, you don't do that. It was wetter than when they threw the yellow earlier and they threw the green. I mean, it's just. Uh, you came you know, down, you appealed to the officials. Correct? I tried, I tried, it doesn't matter. Really, really disappointed. I mean, I mean, they, they normally Brian does a great job, but this one, he really missed it. Michael Andretti once again came down, was yelling at the officials. Ryan Hunter Ray in the car was pleading, saying, this is stupid. We, I can't even put the power down. As a result, you saw what happened. It was an all-skate session, that's for sure, coming down that front straightaway. And because of the way this track is constructed, you know, you, you don't have any room there because there's the pit wall that you see Will Power backed into. And, Jamie, what are you hearing from Tim Sindrick? I'll tell you what, for a good five minutes before they threw the green, Will Power was yelling, no, we cannot go. You see him frustrated. I have never heard Will Power use language like he did and scream like he did. He is going in to talk to the officials. He had a 20-point swing in the championship going. You see him try to get stopped. He's going to have a talk. He's frustrated, and they're saying the same thing. That was awful officiating. You see him very frustrated talking to Charles there. Tim Sindrick is on his way back to the garage to calm his driver down. We are going into a red flag situation. And you can see how livid Will Power is. Because as of right now, he's dropped to ninth, and it could get a lot worse. So let's go back and show you exactly what happened. Number 650 horsepower, Danica tries to get on the power, puts her foot on the pedal, back end just starts to come around. You can see everybody else still sliding around doing the same thing. It collected Takuma Sato. It also collects Will Power. You see Anna Beatrice in this. Here's another angle. Now hers is the first car that starts to come around, which starts the change reaction. And obviously, Brian Barnhart, the chief steward, needs to make the decisions the best that he can, but you can see a little bit of moisture on the lens here. Not sure if that's from before. She just touched the throttle, Marty, and the back end came around. On board with Briscoe. Three. Watch, watch. So Briscoe escapes the carnage, and there is Michael and his reaction. And of course, Will Power, you saw him. Him getting out of the car, here's a replay of that as he is just beside himself. It's frustrating, you know, he's not had the season that uh, he wanted to. He's been so dominant, so many racetracks, had some bad luck, some bad calls. Situation at Mid-Ohio just with an unfortunate scenario of being the wrong place at the wrong time with the yellow. He was at 47 points the way it was, and now it's 57 points based on where he is right now. And if this race restarts, it's going to get even worse because there's still cars that could pass him for position. Well, and you saw the frustration with him uh, right there, and unfortunately that gesture is probably going to cost him. He's going to be a little lighter in the uh, pocketbook, I think, by the time the officials get finished with Gary him. Gary Gerald has caught up with Takuma Sato. He's making that long walk back after an adventurous day here at this racetrack. Tell us about the frustration of being involved in an incident like you were that denies you a chance to get the win. Um, it was my fault. Um, I was too close to Dario and uh, had a had a debris kind of debris in my eye and uh, the, there was tears and uh, there's no excuse for that. But I was uh, too close and he came on. I was I was close to them and um, I'm sorry about that. Have you had a conversation with Dario? Yet? No, I, I just jumped out uh, and and the end of the day. 
we were looking strong, but uh, the rain started. And under that condition of starting, it was all the crescendos and all the accordion stuff that the ho completely front of the low was this, how can I say? Should this race have been restarted in your mind under these conditions? Um, it was a difficult call, but I think it's the moisture was maybe a bit too much. Thank you. Thank you. So Takuma Sato takes the blame for Dario Franchitti contact, and uh, I'm sure they'll have a conversation. And there is what's left of race. his car on the hook. Here is the restart one more time, and watch Danica. She goes around, and the chain reaction begins. For a second, Will Power was going to have minor damage until that contact right there with Ed Carpenter when he backed into the wall. On board with Danica. Just a touch of the throttle so easily for the tires to spin and the back end to come around. From Elio Castro Neves's view. And he was managed to get through unscathed, as did his teammate Ryan Briscoe. What did you have down there on pit lane? Well, we're checking in again with Michael Andretti. We heard the frustration and the emotion when your conversation with Rick DeBruel. In that time since, have you had an opportunity to talk to any of the officials or get any clarification? No, no, they won't tell us what they're doing. Um, just really disappointed. I mean, um, you know, then they throw it red. You know, we would have won the race just in the, you know, the under the yellow, but uh, they're changing everything here. So it's really disappointing. Cost Danica. Hopefully it didn't cost Ryan. I'm hoping and praying that, uh, you know, we get a good restart and we still win this thing. But, you know, it just, uh, I don't know why they did what they did. It was just disappointing. Five laps to go. Any instructions as far as Ryan is concerned in that number one spot if we get to go? And it seems like the rain has let up. Yeah, we're going to get to go. He's just got to get the jump on the restart. So let's hope and pray he does. It's coming down to that. And, uh, you know. Does this side-by-side -side restart business this year concern you now in this situation? Well, it definitely gives, uh, you know, the guy uh, that's in second a better chance of uh, passing, you know. So, but that's, that's, it doesn't matter. That's part of the deal, you know, which is fine. But uh, it's a shame we were put in this position. Thank you, Mike. And we're hearing now that, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, Jamie has caught up with willpower. Well, and as I reported, I heard Will saying for five minutes, let's not go green because the rain is coming. Will, what is it like being in the cockpit when you're told you have to race in conditions yeah. like that? We were begging him. I was begging him, please do not go green. It's too slippery. Um, and from what Tim Sindrick was saying, so was everyone else. So was, everyone was saying it. And you were yelling at the officials, Brian Barnhart in particular. Are you going to go talk to him, and what will you say? There's no use. He makes such bad calls all the time. This is this has got to be it. They, they cannot have this guy running the show because that was the decision that put a lot of drivers in danger. And, you know, you saw how many people crashed on the front straight, and there it was no condition to race in. Shame on him. Came back from a lap down. You gained one Dario at that point. You were fifth. What was it like at that start when it went green? It was just really slippery. You know, and Danica lost it, so I reacted and went this way, and I saw Briscoe coming, so I reacted, spun, and then I got hit by like three or four people, and that hurt too. Man, I just, I just can't believe that they make decisions like that. I mean, what are those guys up there doing? Have you know? I mean, they have Alonza. He's raced. He would never, he'd, he'd never race in these conditions. So to me, it was, it was disgraceful. Those officials that you were yelling at on the radio are the same ones that hand down fines and penalties. Do you think any are coming your way? Yeah, I know that I lost my temper and that, you know, that it was bad of me to do that. But I couldn't help it. I was so emotional about it because we had such a good day. And, um, and we begged them. We begged them not to do it. Big points implication here. Of course, Dario Franchitti out, but Will Power is chasing him in the standings. Marty. Well, and we are still waiting to hear from IndyCar officials about what is going to happen. We're attempting to get Brian Barnhart into our booth here. He is right next door and still in a heavy discussion with the other officials of the IZOD IndyCar series. And if we can get him to come over and explain exactly what is going to happen, we'll do that as quickly as we can. Let's listen to Ryan Hunter Ray on the radio on the restart. This is stupid. I can't even put the power down. Brian, just deal with it and do the best job you can. 
No, he got a better launch because it's wet and I couldn't put the power down at all. The second gear just slide the rear of the car. And of course, that was right before we went back to green flag racing and you saw the end result. Now, Ryan was able to get through it unscathed and we are in this red flag situation waiting to find out what is going to happen with the results of this race. As we talked about before, the drivers do report back and there's the checkered flag. Checkered flag is out. Now that means Ryan Hunter Ray is going to be your race winner. So this race is now officially over. And again, we're still trying to get Brian Barnhart in here to uh, discuss with us what happened on the track and how this decision all came about. But we are now being told this race is over. Ryan Hunter Ray picks up the win. And Michael Andretti is now a lot happier than he was just a few minutes ago. For Ryan, it will be his fifth career win. Second on. Gary, you've uh, caught up with Michael. Once again, how much does this sap the frustration and the disappointment of earlier? It helps a lot. <laughs> a win's a win. You know, I'm just so happy for DHL and Sundrop and Circle K. I mean, they've been hanging in there for with us and uh, finally got Ryan in victory lane. You know, three cars for this team in victory lane this year. The only team to do that. I mean, I'm so proud of everybody and uh, so happy that, uh, you know, they made the decision they did. And thank you, God. Okay, thanks, Mike. So you can hear the sigh of relief in Michael Andretti's voice, and I'm sure that we're going to probably get the same reaction from Ryan Hunter Ray once we get a chance to talk to him. And uh, let's go to our Honda Victory Lane and uh, find out how the winner feels. And Rick DeBrule, it's all yours. Yeah, not the normal Victory Lane. We're standing up here at the front of the grid. He's getting a hug from Michael Andretti. He just got a hug from Marco Andretti just a moment ago. All right, we're going to talk about the win in a second, but you can walk us through what you were thinking and feeling when you were told you had to start this race under the conditions where it was so wet out there. Well, it was, I, I couldn't even warm the tires. It was so wet on the track, you know. Um, I, I don't think the fans at, at, at home I really understand how, how wet it was. And with these cars, we only have a small contact patch. So the Firestone contact patch is amazing. But when there's, when there's some rain down, there's nothing there. I, I couldn't even put the power down in second or third gear. So wrong move on race control's part. But, uh, man, we had such a great car today. It was a blast to drive it. I love these short ovals. A lot of fun. We would have liked to have just finished it under green or, or whatever. It was, it was a strange day, but sometimes racing is strange. All right, for the last four races before this one, you'd kind of been slowly pegging away at a couple of thirds, your top fives, top tens. Did you know it was this close? Did you feel it? I knew we had a good car this weekend. I mean, in practice, we've been, we've been uh, really making the car better and better, and, and the guys have done such a good job. You know, they've just, we just kept at it. We have great chemistry on this team. And um, it's, a, it's a great result. I'm sorry to see, you know, I think where the race turned was Dario and, and Sato getting together. I don't know who was at fault there or what it was. That's for them to decide. But, man, in traffic, the car was so good. And these guys deserve this win. It, uh, it's for them. And Dad at home, how's it going? <laughs> A very happy. I wish it was, wish it was uh, in a little bit of a different way, but um, we'll absolutely take it after the year we've had. It always looks as a victory in the record books. Remember his second oval victory, the first time in an IndyCar. There's Mike Conway congratulating him, and uh, a very happy Ryan Hunter Ray as we come upstairs into our broadcast booth. And joining us is president of competition for the IZOD IndyCar Series, Brian Barnhart. Brian, take us through the process of. Uh, what is going to be the official results? Who's going to finish behind uh, Ryan Hunter Ray now? Well, the official result be, will be the, the positioning order prior to the, the last attempted restart. That's going to be an aborted restart. Obviously, the track conditions uh, were not in, in a position that was safe for us to run. I uh, couldn't agree more with what Ryan said. It's a mistake on race control's part. But again, based on the information we had, we're getting reports back from the observers, from our track safety people, said there wasn't a surface change, said it was, it was a raceable condition. Uh, obviously, the, the attempted restart showed that wasn't the case. So uh, it was a mistake on race control's part. And the only right thing to do and the fair thing to do is go back to the running order prior to that restart because we ended up tearing up some race cars we shouldn't have. Okay, that's, that's obviously going to make Will Power feel better. But before he knew this, obviously, he's a hot under the collar. Will there be any ramifications because these guys were venting before they knew that you were going to change this result and go back to that? Well, I mean, we haven't even looked at that yet, Marty. Obviously, it's uh, we're trying to make sure we're doing the right thing here based on the conditions of the finish of this race. And when you look at, uh, at what these guys are dealing with out there with, with their lives and safety on the line out there, 
where their motions and adrenaline is going to run hard. So um, we'll take a look at that after the fact, but that's secondary compared to doing the right thing for the finishing order. And Brian, were you getting reports from the drivers up into the to your head control there to get into the track? No, and that, that's the hard part about it. I know a lot of them are saying, but we didn't get any, we didn't have a single pit tech call and say that we couldn't go because uh, they were radioing in. Uh, obviously, up top on the on the spotter stand, we knew there was light moisture on the racetrack, but we were counting on at that point in time the observers around the racetrack and our track safety, and they said there was no surface change and it's good to go. And race control, we can only make the decisions based on the information that's provided to us. Uh, clearly, in this case, it was uh, it was not good information, not accurate, and wasn't the right thing to do. And I know from running underneath you, you are all about safety. So it sounds like if you had got that information from the drivers that were in the cockpit, then uh, you would have made a different decision. Yeah, absolutely. We'd have never tried that. And, and that was so obvious as soon as you called it, as soon as, I mean, it's almost one thing if one driver might have spun wheels or, or, or had it, might not. But when three of them go that quick, uh, it's pretty obvious it was a wrong call. Well, Brian, thank you for taking the time and, and explaining that. And I think that it helps ease a, a lot of questions that were cropping up obviously while during the uh, red flag period. I'm going to throw a curveball because I don't have communication directly to the truck. Do we have the results? And thank you guys. Here is what we have and there is what it will be. Now Oriole Servio will finish second, Scott Dixon third, James Hinchcliffe will power, then Danica Patrick, Takuma Sato seventh, Ryan Briscoe eighth, Charlie Kimball ninth, and Vitor Mirror in the tenth position. So that is going to tighten up the points position as they